so so far everything is working just fine except that our graph editor isn't showing uh, it's not showing the right uh, graph when we open this because we have selected this morph here and when we hit that we get something else so actually the problem is quite simple I'd forgotten that this is actually a, vari a variable and not a string because by doing this all I'm saying is this is a string so it gets it as it is however I don't want the text my channel I want its content so in order to do that I have to do this and do a plus like so so that now uh, it's treated as a variable However, it still needs those double quotes between here. So I'm going to add another quote here like that and another one. Now, unfortunately, as you can see, the colors have changed because this is no longer treated as a, uh, a variable because now this is a string and this is a string and this is another string. So I want it to take this as a literal string to be part of this set. So I need to escape it by pressing the slash key and then go to this one again. I want this one to be a literal string to be part of this whole thing. So I'm going to escape that as well and we're done. So now this is the text and then it will have an inverted comma and the text here will be whatever is inside there. And then another inverted comma here and then we are done. All right, so this should work just fine now. So let me remove this, add it again, go to here. Let me see eyes, right, close. So let me click that and we get the correct thing this time. Okay, so if we go to, let's see how the uh, adding of keys is done in real time. So I'll go to frame 10 right there and then move this one. And so you see a key is created right there in real time, which is pretty cool. We go to frame 20 and do that. So you see the keys are given in real time. Okay. So another thing we could add in future here is the interpolation of the key, which is very, very simple to add. So we can choose between Bezier uh, and so on and so forth, because usually, I don't know for some reason here, I can't choose any of these. So we could be able to add that here as a default. So. Before we do that, let's just add a few buttons here to move between keys. All right, let's add some buttons then. So let me go back here and let's go to the options right there. So let's add a button two and a button three. So let's go to B2 and B3. So in here, we're going to put this sign and in this one, we're going to put that sign. So since they'll be on the same uh, X, Y position, so we just need to change the X position. So I'll put this one at 100, this one at 150. So B3, B2. So we'll change these later. For now, we just want to see the positioning of these guys. So there they are. But I want them all the way over here. So what I'll do is, um, I know that the width of this whole thing is 320. So I must put this at 300. The X. Okay. And then this one will follow right behind at two. What was the difference? 30, 150, 100. Okay. So I'll put this one at 300 and this one at 250. 
Let's see what we've got. Oh, we're almost there. But close enough. So let me just move them a bit. Maybe 70. Oh, what was that? That was 20 I moved there. Okay, so you get the idea. So these can be moved as you wish. So no need to keep tinkering there. So only what we need to do is make something so that when once we click these guys, uh, something will actually happen. We can move between keyframes. So in order to do that, let's create uh, two functions here. Actually, they can go to the... No, let's create two functions. So we're going to say uh, this one will be previous keyframe, previous key. So let's abbreviate to prev key. And this one will be next key. So let's go down here and add these next key. All right, and then previous key. So this won't be hard because we already know the parameters that we need. First of all, we should know at what point are we. So my time is equal to current scene dot current time okay so now we want to know what the next key is so we know this selected so we have to check if selected channel is active let's continue now what we need to do in here is grab all the keys that are in this channel and then find out which one is the nearest to where we are and get the time. So in here, what we'll do is we're going to say keys is equal to selected channel dot keys. So the keys are in there. So if keys like that, we go through all the keys, one key at a time so we are going to say uh, for we are making a loop here so we're going to say for i is equal to one then i less than or equal to keys dot size so go through all the keys and then increment i on every turn and so key the current key is equal to keys i so this is a single key that we are getting each time we loop so let's make sure that this is an actual key so we're going to say if key because errors are everywhere so we have to take care of that so we say if the key is valid what we're going to say is check its timing is it less than or greater than this one so we are going to the next key so we want to find the key greater than my current time okay so we're going to say key time is equal to key dot get key time key now if key if key time is greater than my time, then we found our winner. So if it's greater, then we move. We get the command and say, go to frame. Okay, go to frame. What frame number are we going to? Well, it's the key time multiplied by the frames per second. So scene dot frames per second, like that. So if we don't find anything greater, we don't do nothing. Okay, let's go back and see if this actually works. More often than not, we expect errors. 
So let's open the graph editor here so that we can watch this in real time. So let me put it there and click here. Oh, there we go. Invalid object method get key time. Hmm. So where is this? Uh, get key time. Key is equal to. All right, so I'm not supposed to use the key. I'm supposed to use the channel. My bad. Channel get key time. Okay, so we should be good now. We go. So let's move. Ah, there we go. So it moved. Let me move back again. And it moved until the end, which is not cool. We wanted it to move just to the next one. So it seems it didn't stop when it got to that one. So once we do this, uh, we're supposed to tell it to break. Once it does this, break. Okay, don't move any further. So let's remove this and start again. There we are graph editor let's go back here and let's hit the next there we go next keyframe next keyframe isn't that awesome so we can do the same to the previous keyframe by just reversing what we've done in here so to reverse that let's select everything in here go to previous keyframe paste so instead of uh, greater than we want something less than Okay, I think that's about it. So let's go back here and see if that works as well. Pom -pom. There we go. E. So let's try the previous key button. This one works pretty well, but this one not so much. So what's the issue? Oh yeah, because the problem here is that um, from the very start, the, the key that is first uh, seen is the first one. So it starts by checking this one and this one, will, if for example, we are at this, at this time, frame 30, so when it starts checking to see which key is lower than this one, it will start from the first one. So it's better it starts from the last one because the first one will always be smaller in time. So it will snap to that one. So that's not what we want. So in order to avoid that, we have to reverse the order of the looping. So we do minus minus and then we do less than and then what I want to do here is uh, get this. It should start from, I should start from the total number. And then the equation should be if I is less than or equal to, uh, oh, oh. so I starts with the total size. It's actually this one again. Okay. No, actually here we have to put it back to one. Ah. So we swap what was there and put it here. So it starts at the maximum number. Let's say the keys are 10. So we start at 10. And then for as long as it's less than or equal to one, we do that. Actually, it's greater than here. So for as long as I is greater, which it will be than one, because it starts, for example, at 10, then we continue and then we decrement instead of incrementing we reduce it by one so this should work just fine if i am not mistaken so let's load that again e 
So let's move forward and let's move back. Excellent, excellent. So everything is working as planned. So the only thing that we can do now is to change uh, the incoming curve type here, whether it's Bezier, Spline or whatever it is. And we can add a simple pop-up here as a bonus uh, tutorial if you want to learn that kind of thing. So I'm going to put that video as the last one and I'll see you in the next one.